as we've been reporting today, Kathleen Folbeck has been uh, had her convictions quashed over the convictions of murdering her four children. We saw the scenes outside court today, which were very emotional. Let's bring in live now Cosmos Science reporter Matthew Ward Aegis. Matthew, for those people who haven't been following every twist and turn of this long running saga, tell us how did science lead to this result today? Yeah, it's a really interesting uh, story in the way that science has become part of a major, uh, a major part of Australian legal history. Basically, um, for a long time, it had been known that the children had died largely in unexplained circumstances. That was what was found in the postmortems that came out from each of the four children's deaths over about a decade between 1989 and 1999. And usually it was unexplained or SIDS, and in the case of one child, potentially uh, epilepsy. She was convicted in 2003 and then has since served 20 years in prison. What happened is that after Kathleen Folbig had exhausted all of her avenues of appeal, science had uh, been used at a, a governor's inquiry in uh, 2019. And in that process, they investigated the genomes of the four children. And two of the children were shown to have a particular genetic mutation. Uh, it's a mutation to a gene that's essential for life, not just in humans, but all vertebrate species and, and across uh, the animal and plant kingdoms. And this gene is essentially found to not really mutate. Only recently, in the last 10 years, it's been found that people do live on Earth with mutations to this gene, but often with cardiac problems. And it was suggested by the team that did this inter investigation, an international team, no less, that this would explain why two children, Sarah and Laura, who had inherited this gene from their mother, might well have died in a case of SIDS or unexplained circumstances. So from that basis, this second inquiry was opened by the new, former New South Wales government. And... Other science was heard too. So it was brought up by fed, sitting federal MP Monique Ryan, who's a paediatric pe neurologist, that the epilepsy that Patrick had would explain his death. And it was also found that one of the children, Laura, had myocarditis, which is heart inflammation. That was sort of dismissed in the original investigations, the original trial. Uh, but it was suggested here as a, a plausible explanation for why a child might die in unexplained circumstances as well. So there has been a lot of science that's come into this. One of the other things was psychiatric and psychological evaluations of her diaries in full. Excerpts of those diaries were used in her original trial to convict her. But when read in full, the psychologists and psychiatrists that were brought in by the inquiry to provide expert opinion found that it actually just showed the, the writings of a grieving mother trying to make sense of why her children were unexplained, uh, are dying in unexplained circumstances. So um, very uh, multifaceted science and scientific evaluation as part of this inquiry, and that has led to today's decision. So, Matthew, in terms of the way the justice system adjusts to new scientific research like this, do we need an overhaul, reforms on that front? Because this was such a dragged out, long process for Kathleen Folbig. Absolutely. 20 years is a long time to be found that you weren't guilty. Uh, I think what you will find is that there are many people that have for a long time for this case, but also other cases, advocated for the introduction of processes to allow courts to review criminal convictions based on new evidence coming to light. It's not necessarily a new concept. They are used in other countries and other Commonwealth countries with similar legal systems to ours. The Australian Academy of Science has today uh, reiterated its previous calls on the back of this case, noting that they were one of the original petitioners for an inquiry to be held into Kathleen Folbig's convictions for better systems to actually test evidence that comes into the legal process to make sure that experts called in to give expert evidence are in fact experts in the particular domain. Uh, legal teams do have the ability to pick which experts come in to provide evidence for their, for their arguments. Um, and also, broadly speaking, to test new science as it comes to light. In this case, Kathleen Folbig had exist, uh, exhausted all of her avenues of appeal. The thing is, is that the human genome was decoded the same year that she was put into prison. So if that information might have been available now and we could do those gen genetic uh, uh, those genetic audits, let's say, um, it might have been a very different story 20 years ago. We didn't have that then. We do now. And so as science continues to advance, how can it be used to inform and get the right out come in legal processes where there might be a wrongful conviction as we've seen with this one. Matthew, really appreciate you taking us through the ins and outs of that so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.